The tissue repository is an in invaluable resource which uh, has allowed us to really bank human tissue samples from patients with uh, myelodysplastic syndrome and leukemia over the course of 20 years, um, this, uh, which allows us to perform what would be otherwise impossible to perform, which is longitudinal studies, asking a question about what happened about the evolution of this disease starting 15 years ago and tracking in the same patient over time uh, what happens, is how is the disease evolving, what new clones are arising, how is uh, the patient responding to any kind of therapy, but right down at the cellular level. So it's like, it's like having the, the, uh, an unimaginable laboratory in which you can track the course of a disease, not in a single point of time, but over its entire history. We have over 50,000 samples from thousands of MDS patients. Other people may have hundreds or thousands of samples, but you see, our strength is that we have followed the same patient serially, some of them over 20 years. For me, it was really an opportunity to combine what we were doing in the laboratory with translational work, really pioneering work that had been done, and now begin to combine these two aspects of the program for human benefit, for really creating novel medicines for patients that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. You can't just study one patient in a static one moment in time. What we have to do is study the same patient serially, sequentially, longitudinally. So it's a bi-directional translational that is constantly going on. Well, let's say we're, we, you're being treated over the, course of, uh, over the course of a decade, and we discover late that you suddenly had a change in the biology of your cancer. What's amazing about it is that we can go to the freezer and pick out a sample which was before that change and after the change and compare them and ask the question, what, what happened? At the molecular level, the genetic level, what happened? And can we now use that information when we give you the next series of drugs? In a very powerful way, the tissue repository allows us to do two things. Number one, it allows us to personalize cancer therapy, which is one of the very important goals of the MDS Center. And the second thing is that it allows us to create innovative therapies that wouldn't exist otherwise. One of the things that we're trying to do is we've, we're trying to create microscopic, you know, you can, you can barely see them in your eye, but microscopic wells in which we take a patient's own microenvironment and a patient's own cancer cells and we make them collaborate in a little petri dish. And you can now add drugs to that outside the patient before these, even, these drugs even go into the patient. You can add drugs to that and say, well, is this little microenvironment responding or not responding to a drug? And therefore, in the second generation of trials now, we can really personalize the medicine. We can only give the medicine to people who are responding and spare the people who are not responding and give them other medicines. It has infinite potential for developing individualized therapies of the future. We are interested in creating human medicines for a human disease. Every year has brought a kind of illuminating clarity about what goes wrong in a cancer cell and how it's different from a normal cell. The whole field is just erupting with excitement. The entire landscape has changed. And our commitment has become even stronger. The presence of the tissue depositor at New York Presbyterian, I think, allows us truly really to be poised for a future of personalized therapy trials. It's the foundation for the future. This is the only way that we will be able to convert MDS into a chronic disease that patients can live with and not die from. And this is the paradigm that will then be extended to the study and treatment of all cancers.